And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Claxton. And now, around the world and around the corner, it's the David Bowers Awards, bringing the best in indie music to millions of listeners worldwide with your host, the David Bowers. We've got a fantastic lineup of guests, as well as our engineer extraordinaire, Nick the Geek, our entire crew here at the Asylum, and me, I'm John Bon Jovial. And now, here's the voice of indie music, the David Bowers. Thank you very much, John Bon Jovial. Welcome once again, friends, neighbors, fans around the world. Uh, so glad to have you here with us for another hour of indie music and talk with the artists who make it. We've got, as I mentioned, a uh, show, a showcase this week from our friends at Lady Lake Music. We have uh, Amina the Rock Queen who will be joining us in, uh, well, in about 20 minutes or so. And uh, before that, we're going to be hearing from a gentleman who goes by the name of Thomas Claxton. Uh, Thomas is a... Uh, well, he's been around for a while. He's not a newcomer, and he's just joined Lady Lake. We'll be uh, promoting him and getting him out on the road, so all of you get a chance to go see him and listen to him in person. He's a four-time IMC Award winner. He's a vocalist and songwriter who does over 300 shows a year. And uh, the interesting part is now uh, Thomas Claxton is a classically trained tenor, and uh, it's, it's interesting to see how he has translated this to the pop music genre. He's also performed with some major artists. He's uh, played with Chuck Negron, the Three Dog Knight, and uh, former New York Yankees uh, musician Bernie Williams, who does some really, really good music. Uh, and he's played with many others, also opened for many, including the Marshall Tucker Band, and uh, Mike and the Mechanics, he's uh, open for as well. I think you're going to like him. As I said, his name is Thomas Claxton. And the first song he's going to do for us today is a thing called I Didn't Ask for This. See 
I didn't ask for this. That's Thomas Claxton, our next guest here on our Lady Lake Music Showcase. Come on in, Thomas Claxton, and say hello. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you? Doing great, Thomas. So glad to have you here with us. And uh, I, on behalf of all of our friends at Lady Lake Music, welcome to the Lady Lake family. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me on today. Our pleasure. Tell us a little bit about Thomas Claxton for the people who aren't familiar with you. <laughs> okay, i gotta got to tell the part people might like. <laughs> so, oh, uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's, yeah, I've been a uh, career musician now um, ever since I was in high school, man. This is what I've been doing for a long time. And, and um, you know, I, I travel the country. I have started off playing in Savannah, Georgia, and now I've worked my way around the nation and doing shows anywhere from Miami to Alaska and L.A. to New York and just enjoying life, man. You know, rock and roll is a big part of me, and and that's what I enjoy doing. So I try to deliver to everybody and hope that they like what I give them. Well, put a note, put a couple of notes on your uh, on your future itinerary there. Uh, Naples, Fort Myers, Florida, and uh, Tempe in the Phoenix area in Arizona. Uh, this is, uh, my co-host John Bon Jovi and myself. We'd like to get out and see. We'd like to get and see uh, see our guests in person when they play our area, and uh, we'd look forward to meeting you in person as well. Uh, I know we talked about before you came on. Uh, we talked about the fact that. Uh, uh, you do, what, over 300 shows a year. Uh, you've performed with some major names. We mentioned the couple, Chuck Negron and uh, Bernie Williams, among others. And, uh, well, you were the, the thing that uh, kind of surprised us uh, in, a, in a nice way, but it was uh, it's unusual that uh, we have an artist on here doing pop, rock, and roll uh, that's a classically trained singer. I understand that you were classically trained as a tenor. That's correct. Yeah, man. I studied uh, studied under Dr. Lauren Ringwall, and uh, who now teaches at the Piedmont University outside of Atlanta. And um, I owe a lot to her, you know, because uh, it's it's you know even though it's rock and roll, I, I think um, the misconception is you know a lot of rock singers wind up wind up damaging their voice, but because of that classical training, you know, it's really helped me preserve it. Even though I keep such a uh, such a busy schedule, you know. So um, you know, and and I. I'm the kind of guy I kind of piece a little bit together from every everyone that I've worked with and everybody I've studied under. Um, so she was the beginning of my teaching, and uh, now I currently uh, study under Ron Anderson uh, out of Los Angeles. And um, <clears throat> Ron is a vocal coach for numerous celebrities, and uh, I see Ron's taught Axl Rose and Alicia Keys and Chris Cornell people like that, you know, so I, I figured, you know, with a, with a resume like that, Ron Anderson must be, uh, must be a hell of a guy, you know, so I've just, just been, uh, you know, studying under him, trying to expand the horizons, you know. I know what you mean, and you bring out a very interesting point. We do a lot of work with the emerging artists. It's, uh, it's one of our specialties here on the show. We like to, we like to think that we give emerging artists one more stage to present their, themselves, their talents, and their music. And uh, we do a thing uh, periodically called Rockstar 101, where we have, uh, we have major people from the music industry, all walks of the industry, uh, discuss what it takes to make it in today's uh, music world. And as I said, you brought out a point that uh, I think is oft overlooked, and that's the fact that uh, no matter how old you are, or how much experience you've had, how long you've been doing it, you're never too old to learn. And you mentioned the fact that you are still uh, taking lessons and still learning after, a, you know, after a period of time in the business. I think that's a, a great thing for the emerging artists to keep in mind. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I always figured, um, you know, the day you think you know it all is the day you might as well quit, you know, because um, you know, if, if you think you know everything, you're never going to get anywhere. So, uh, exactly. you know, that's, uh, that's always been my mentality. And while I'm still a young guy, you know, I don't care one day when I'm 80 something years old, if there's something I can ever learn from anybody, I'm going to do my best at it. And, uh, you know, just give it 150% every time. Exactly. Actually, I had, I have told my children in their growing years 
you know, because kids always look for it. I can't wait to get out of school and I'll be on my own and free. And I keep, I kept trying to remind them that life is school. You never really graduate. You just move from one course to a postgraduate course, but you're always learning. And if you're not, as you indicated, then there's something wrong. John Bon Jovial is always learning, and he's always helping us learn something. What you got for us, John? Well, uh, first of all, you know we are so glad to uh, have you with us, Thomas. It, it, it's great that you've taken the time to, you know, out of your busy day to spend a little time with us. And uh, David will tell you that, and uh, he does this to me every single week, uh, in that I don't get to listen to the music before we air it. So I just listen to your song, and I listen to it for the first time I'd ever heard it. And uh, I, I very much like what I heard. I can hear, now that I know that you're a uh, classically uh, trained uh, vocalist, uh, I, I can hear it. Um, and my impression, you know, there, there's, and I don't know if these guys were classically trained or not, uh, in, uh, in voice work, whether it be at opera or whatever. Uh, but you kind of remind me a little bit of a, a, a gentleman named Tony Hadley, who's the lead singer for Spandau Ballet. And, uh, also, um, Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues. There's, there's a quality to oh. that voice. And, uh, well, that's a huge honor. Yeah. Well, you're you're welcome, and and uh, but I I mean that I wouldn't say it unless I meant it. So uh, that's just my observation. Uh, I, I I love the song. I love the production values behind it, uh, and uh, I'm uh, duly impressed that you've opened for some uh, some fairly large names. And I hope that the day comes when there are names that open for you. Well, we'll we'll see. I mean, you know, I've I've. My uh, the way I've done things in my career has been um, has been interesting to say the least. You know, I'm I'm still a believer that you can go out and do things the grassroots way of networking and just physically talking to people and meeting people and shaking hands and and uh, even though today that seems like something that kind of gets thrown to the wayside, you know, because of social media and the internet and things like that and every opportunity that I've ever gotten, I just tried to, you know, add a little bit to who I am from every opportunity. So uh, the first tour that I ever did, um, was, it was an arena tour actually. And I, and I went from playing, you know, small venues to, you know, the next day I was in a big arena with, uh, with Chuck Negron and, um, and Chuck was very nice to me, very kind to me, and uh, you know. But I, I was a backing vocalist for for him on this tour, so I was actually in the band with him, and um, you know, that was a huge learning experience. And uh, from there, I just went on to you know work with some different people, and the ones that I've opened for, I can't say enough great things about. You know, everybody in this business is very unique. That's the I think that's the great thing about the music industry is you never know what you're going to get. And some people, um, some people are the kindest people in the world. Some are a little rough around the edges, but you know, you, I don't think you can ever learn too much from any of them. To be honest with you, one of the nicest guys I ever uh, opened for was Mike Rutherford from Genesis, and um, he was he was such a nice guy. Gave me some really good advice. You know, a lot of these guys have actually taken time to speak with me and give me a lot of. Uh, a lot of good learning tools. Isn't, you know, isn't, he, uh, isn't he the Micahs uh, of uh, Mike and the Mechanics? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, okay. uh, I thought so. And see, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite songs of all time was uh, "The Living Years." If you remember that one. Oh, it's a great. I oh, love yeah. that and, uh, song. Great song. Uh, that, that's one of those songs that always gave me chills. You know, every time I heard it, because it's such a true statement, and. Um, you know, I, I I love songs that have meaning, and that song had a had a big impact on me. You know, it's okay to be upset, but don't hold grudges because one day it could be too late, and uh, you know, to to make up and take it all back. And that song was just very powerful. You know, so uh, to be able to open for Mike and the Mechanics was was really like a dream come true. Even though, you know, they might not have had the name that Genesis had, but still, you know. I, they were one of my favorite groups back in the day. So the people that I've 
had a chance to open for and work with, you know, have all had a big impact on me. Well, I'll be honest with you. I liked them a whole lot better than Genesis anyway, so I think you were in very good company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, I, I love, I love um, Bill Collins and I love Peter Gabriel, but I tend to like their solo stuff more, you know? Like, um, you're a like man Peter after Gabriel my heart. Vincent. You are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know what it was. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't good in Genesis by any means. I mean, it was great stuff. But, but like, you know, when Peter Gabriel was by himself, he wrote, you know, "In Your Eyes," which is another fantastic song. And, um, you know, and that's the kind of stuff that I enjoy listening to. You know, all of that. Like, you know, I live in Savannah, Georgia. So when I'm on the road, I do a lot of original stuff. But in Savannah. Savannah's a tourist town, you know, so they want cover music along with my originals. And so if I'm going to have to play cover music, I always do stuff that I enjoy personally. So I'm the guy oh, sure. in town that I'm the guy that will go out there and play In Your Eyes and Super Tramp and, and things like that, you know, because that's what I like. And my mentality has always been if, you, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then how can you give a crowd 100%? And that's Good always point. my mentality to it. So, you know, yeah. I'm not one of those guys who just plays whatever they want to hear, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. I want to jump in here with one interesting little sidebar, uh, or at least I think it's interesting, and I'm going to jump in here anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> as John Bon Jovial mentioned to you, I purposely don't let him audition the songs ahead of time because I'd like to get his <laughs> first reaction, uh, his gut reaction with no preconceptions or anything because let's face it people that hear you for the first time are doing just that they're hearing you for the first time so this is a, a neat advantage i have in being able to have him uh react cold off the cuff to what he thinks of the new music we play and another thing about john bon jovial that i think you guys have in common is i've heard a rumor uh thomas that you're not a fan of autotune no, no, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you are a man you know, after I, my heart, then. I, I understand why some people use it. I mean, don't get me wrong, but... but oh, no, let's be perfectly time. honest here. Auto-tune is for people that don't have talent. If you have talent, you don't need it. <laughs> it's plain and simple. Oh, my God. What, what Did you ever see the, uh, the clip on one of the um, reality shows? I don't remember whether it was The Voice or American Idol. And uh, and they shot the guy down, and it was it was Simon. He was there with uh, three of the other judges, and and one of the girls said something to him like, "I have to be honest, that was one of the most horrific things I've ever heard." And the guy <laughs> looks right, and the guy looks right at her, and he goes, "Well, see, that's why you use auto tuning, and I don't." <laughs> and Simon's eyes got huge, and he looked like he was about to spit his drink up. It was hilarious. You know, because she was right. It was terrible, but he was also right because she auto-tuned everything. So, you know, just funny stuff. I, you know, I can remember I, seeing I figured, the... No, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I figure that, uh, you know, if I want people to hear the same thing on my album that they would be hearing from me live. And I think that right there changes a lot you know with people yeah i hear people all the time say well i went to see them man they don't sound anything like they did on their album well, right you know, you know. There, there was a time i can remember seeing the black eyed peas on tv and uh you know they've they've got this really slick i don't remember the name of their the, the big hit that they had but uh uh it this slick gorgeous production and then i remember seeing a live rendition of that on tv i don't know maybe it was you know dick clark's rock and new year's eve uh, who knows and they did it live and they were horrible they were they couldn't sing on key they were terrible so hey you, well it you might have been cold the, you want to see the most brilliant thing or, or hear the most brilliant thing you've ever heard is go to youtube and type in toto rosanna isolated tracks uh -oh. And this is no oh, no 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 it's it is gorgeous. I mean Oh really? This oh my god. Look, it, this is before anybody was, you know, jumping on the auto tune bandwagon right. too hardcore. Sure. And uh and this is all pure and all natural and to hear Bobby Kimball and Lucather 
and you know Prakara all doing these harmony parts was just breathtaking and they didn't miss a note it was perfect and I think that's another lost art you know I mean really you don't you just don't hear that very often in the mainstream stuff anymore everything's everything's like check that all sounds really cookie cutter uh, well you know we're uh, we're I hate to say it but we're running a little short of time here want to be sure and extend to you our invitation to come back we have this family thing here where once you're on our show you're part of our family you're always welcome you've got some new music or something else you want to share we'll always find a place for you be sure and check our Facebook page, the David Bowers Awards Groups page, and uh, that is there for guests on the show to post their information, anything to do with their music, uh, their show dates, their tours, new music, whatever. It's there, one more place for you to post and spread the word. And before we let you go, want to get you to tell us, if you would please, a little bit about this next track we're going to play called The Other Side of You. Yeah, the other side of you was um, was I wrote that song about just kind of what it sounds like, you know, thinking you know in somebody but you really don't. And uh, I had some great uh, people on that album working with me. Uh, one of the best drummers I know named Mark Backwer was on that, and um, a bassist named Michael Amico out of Orlando, Florida, who played with Pat Travers for a little while, and um, and a phenomenal guitar player that I toured with. And on, on some arenas uh, named Phil Hillborn. Phil played for many years with the London musical We Will Rock You and has worked with numerous people from Brian May to Les Paul and Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden. You know, so uh, a lot of phenomenal players were on that, and it was it was excellent to really record that with them. And that song recently won the uh, one best rock artist for me in the 2019 IMC Awards in Los Angeles, and it's the second track on my brand new album, Age of Propaganda. Awesome. Thomas Claxton, thank you so much for coming and spending time with us, sharing your your life, your story, your music, and we do look forward to having you come back again and see us in the very near future, Thomas. Thank you. You got it. Thank you both. Have a great day. You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Thomas Claxton, The Other Side of You.
Oh, yeah. I'm out of breath on that one. Thomas Claxton, the other side of you, right here on the David Bowers Awards.